do you guys count novellas and novelettes towards your yearly reading goal i feel like that's a controversial topic and i am very strongly on one side of it friends welcome back to my channel who boy april has just been slumping along for me when it comes to reading is that a good segue into how to get out of a reading slump no i don't know if i know the definition of a segue <laughs> that's right everybody today's video topic is the best sci-fi and fantasy novellas to get you out of a reading slump and speaking of definitions that i don't know some of these are not actually novellas i looked it up and a novella is 10,000 to 40,000 words a novelette is 7,500 to 19,000 words and a novel is anything over 40,000 words so i do not actually know the word counts of any of the books that are laying at my feet right now um so <laughs> bear with me okay suspend your disbelief Maybe they're not novellas, maybe they're novelettes, maybe they're just short novels. The video topic is short books to help you get out of reading slump. I'm trying to help you. Stop harassing me for not knowing the definition of a novella. I've also inadvertently made this into a tour showcase video apparently because literally every book that I'm gonna be showing today, except for one, is a tour novella. <laughs> Clearly I have a type. Before we get into my giant list of novellas and novelettes and short novels, don't forget to like and subscribe and ring the bell icon so you know when I upload my new videos. I upload four times a week. I really like to intersperse my reading with, you know, long books and novellas because it makes me feel very accomplished and it pads out my yearly reading goal. So, you know, if I read like something by Ryan Cahill and then want to die after because I just spent 40 years reading a book, I can read a book that's under 100 pages and it still counts as a book. Fight me on that. I think the best option to start with is actually a novella duology. Silver in the Wood and Drowned Country are by Emily Tesh. This is a queer folkloric horror-esque story um, with some elements of The Witcher, kind of more in book two, but a little bit in book one. And it's gorgeous. I cried. I don't cry very easily at books, but book one made me cry because it was just so... Emily Tesh actually has a new novel coming out. I'm not sure if it's a novella, but I think it's a full-length novel uh, called Some Desperate Glory. I can put that up. So pick up these now and read them super quick to find out if you like her style, and then pick up Some Desperate Glory because I personally adore this. The second novella I would like to show off, I'm not actually sure if this is a novella, it might be a little bit longer. It's got kind of the same vibes to me as Silver in the Wood and Drowned Country, and it is Spear by Nicola Griffith. This is actually a gender-bent Arthurian tale, which is not immediately obvious by the look and synopsis. Nicola Griffith is really, really good at spinning what should be just historical fiction into something fantastical and beautiful and super engaging, so definitely check out Spear. And then in the realm of sci-fi horror, we have Flowers for the Sea by Zin E. Rocklin. This book is haunting. Like when a lot of books are described as like hauntingly beautiful, this is that, truly. Survivors from a flooded kingdom struggle alone on an ark. Resources are scant and ravenous sea beasts circle. Their fangs are sharp. Among the refugees is Araxi, ostracized, despised, and a commoner who refused a prince. She's pregnant with a child who might be more than human. Her fate may be darker and more powerful than she can imagine. Again, just a little tiny book. I lied, I lied when I said that they were all tour except for one. There's two, because this is by Saga Press. Six Gun Snow White is a fairy tale retelling, but it is also a Western. It also makes a statement, okay? This is not just some Snow White retelling. Although her mother's life ended as her heroine's journey began, so begins a remarkable tale that is equal parts heartbreak and strength. This girl has been born into a world with no place for a half-crow, half-white child. After hiding the girl for years, a very wicked stepmother finally gifts her with the name Snow White, referring to the pale skin the child will never have. Filled with fascinating glimpses through the fabled looking glass, as well as close-up look at hard living in the gritty, gunslinging West, this is an utterly enchanting story, at once familiar and entirely new. Next, I want to show off two novellas by the same author that are not related to each other, but they are Servant Mage and The Keeper Six by Kate Elliott. Both from Tor, obviously. Servant Mage is a couple of years old now, really great book. Keeper Six just came out in, I want to say February. If you would like some really, really good, underrated, unheard of dragon, fantasy, sci-fi, magical realism, check these two out. Okay, 
So these next two books you might be like, why are you putting them on your list, Jules, if you don't like them? Well, because you might. <laughs> These are two novellas that I read earlier this year, again, to pad out my, you know, reading list. And I didn't love either of them. One of them, totally unheard of. And the other one is quite popular. So maybe you've read it and maybe you loved it and I'm sorry. The first one that you probably haven't heard of is All the Horses of Iceland by Sarah Tolmy. This is a historical fantasy retelling like a travel log, essentially. It has really strange prose. That was my biggest issue with it. It is the type of book where it's like, the guy did this, and then he did this, and then it's seven days later, and he traveled here. And I, I don't know, it's not for me, but it's very short. Filled with the magic and darkened whispers of a people on the cusp of a major cultural change, All the Horses of Iceland tells the tale of a Norse trader, his travels through Central Asia, and the ghostly magic that followed him home to the land of fire, stone, and ice. And then for the arguably most controversial book on my list, we have Nothing But Blackened Teeth by Cassandra Ka. It is a Japanese haunted house situation, and yeah, it's good, it's interesting. If you haven't read a lot of horror, you might really like it. And I've had a lot of people actually in my comments recently asking for more horror recommendations. So here's like a kind of non-recommendation recommendation. I thought it was a little boring. It was, it was just very slow and it was not scary in my opinion. So as someone that loves horror, not for me. But if you're a horror newbie, yeah, why not? Look at this cover. The cover's spooky. Cassandra Kaw also has a new book coming out called The Salt Grows Heavy. Um, I've heard really excellent reviews of that one so far, so fingers crossed that that one is gonna be more up my alley. But check out Nothing But Blackened Teeth. Why not? I talked about The Crane Husband a little bit in my last video. Um, so this just came out at the beginning of March. It is a retelling of The Crane Wife, which I figured out is not a fairy tale. It is Japanese folklore. So retelling of that. I'm gonna be starting this very very soon. I'm very excited. Say very again. I dare you. I cannot rave enough about The Ballad of Black Tom by Victor Laval. This book is exceptional. Uh, it's a little bit older and this is a reprint with the new cover and I just had to get the new cover because it's stunning. I, I want you to be able to get a better look at it here. It's a little difficult. This is not only a creepy paranoid Lovecraftian occult sorcery tale. It's also an examination of racism and culture in America. So it's just like so good. <laughs> oh and it's Jazz Age New York. How can you not want that? Remember all the way back at the start of the video when I said oh only one of these books is not by tour. This is the book now. It's Coraline by Neil Gaiman. If you have not read Coraline you're wrong. It is in fact a requirement of existing that you must read Coraline. And if you don't read it right now, you will cease to exist. Goodbye. I don't know what happened to my copy that... <laughs> and after you finish reading Coraline, please go watch the stop motion animation movie because it's also fantastic. It's quite different from the book, but like, that's okay. It's really good. Guys, how could I not end my list of short books with the queen of short books herself? My favorite author, T. Kingfisher. I actually wanted to pull all of her books off of the shelf here and include them because really this should just be a video of all of the short T. Kingfisher books that you need to read right now. But I'm specifically going to talk about What Moves the Dead, which is an Edgar Allan Poe followed the House of Usher retelling. Retelling. Super creepy, super good. I've talked about it before. I talked about this book in my phobias video, which you should check out if you have not yet because I struggle in that video. T. Kingfisher's newest book just came out a house with good bones i haven't dived into this yet but uh, i've heard excellent things and like uh, of course it's excellent it's t kingfisher one day i'm gonna do a video on why i'm obsessed with her so that you can actually trust me and believe me when i say that her books are incredible and you're not just like who who are you talking about t kingfisher Anyways, that is the end of my list of novellas and novelettes to read to get you out of a reading slump. You should really do what I do. Take my advice, read long books and then short books and go back and forth all year until you've hit your reading goal or until you cry because you aren't hitting your reading goal and you can't even finish a novella and you're bad at reading. I love you guys, bye, like and subscribe.